Hey everyone, uh, today is just a quick look at the EK Quantum Magnitude for Threadripper. Uh, you may have seen this block on GGF LAN. I think Stuart Tonks is the only one that has had one, maybe some other people, but no one showed it off. He's had it since last year. Uh, I've had this block for about two, three weeks. Um, by the time you see this video, it would have been announced publicly. Um, so let's just take a look. This is, I believe, what you would get retail packaging. This block will come in nickel, acetyl, and plexi-clear. The one I have here is the nickel version. All right, so let's take a look at it. Standard affair with the packaging. Uh, I've opened this already, so it's not. <laughs> the plastic is not perfect peel. But um, pretty much in the box, you get the block. Uh, if you have the RGB version, then obviously you have an RGB wire. Uh, the nickel does not have RGB this time. I know previously the logo was lit up on the nickel on the velocity version. Uh, I don't know why that wasn't continued, but frankly, I personally don't care. Um, the one I'm using, my velocity, the... I didn't even hook up the RGB. I, I took the wire out. Okay, so this is the mounting hardware you get and you get some thermal paste. And that's pretty much that's all you get in the box. Now, let's take a closer look at this block. I will be comparing this block with the velocity in terms of temperature. So uh, by the time this video comes up, this block would already be in my system and I will take a look at the difference. I know the insides of this block um, has been changed, okay? So the cold plate's a different design than the older Threadripper. Uh, velocity design um, but speaking of magnitude uh, this is my first magnitude block that I'm going to use now I've had the Intel and AMD ones in my hands before I know how they feel etc but this block is extremely you know I have to say since it's third is kind of big it's really heavy it's like over two pounds okay um, it should be over two pounds I gotta weigh a check but I think it is uh, but the the frame here the build quality on these magnitude blocks you know when especially when you get a large one like this it's just so it's so there and i don't think photos do it justice because you have to have these things in your hand you have to play with them and then you you get a sense of how well these things are built i just want to talk about how far ek has gone um from the first threadripper block uh this is the first threadripper block okay <laughs> Yeah, it's very tiny, right? Uh, this is essentially a Supremacy Evo with an extended cold plate. And this, granted, this is an AM4 bracket because I, I using this on Threadripper was garbage, okay? It's trash. So I ended up repurposing it for AM4. So this is an AM4 bracket. I don't know where the Threadripper bracket went. I probably threw it away. Um, but this used the old Supremacy Evo uh, engine. and they tried to fix the cold plate later on by extending the cold plate in terms of the thinner ray a little bit more. I did a video on this. It's on my channel from like many years ago. So this is trash, all right? This was just utter trash. And it's shocking they sold it for so long. And I even got banned on, from EK Twitter for calling them out on this being trash like every week because they kept selling it. And um, support even knew these things sucked and they kept selling it. So I hated that. Um, so about a little bit i would say after half a year this came out they released this okay this was the update so now if you can see in here this uh had a whole new fin array inside a new cooling engine and the cold plate grew a lot right it actually became the full size of the die and some um so well, not the die, but, you know, the, the, the IHS on the CPU. Um, this worked uh, pretty well. It fell in line with uh, every other, every other uh, cooler at the time. Uh, XSPC, Heat Killer. Not as good as Heat Killer. Um, and it was a big improvement. Granted, if you look at it, it's still not too impressive in terms of build wise, right? But, um, yeah, there was not much I could complain because pricing-wise, it was similar to everything else in the market. And performance-wise, it was maybe one to three degrees, you know, within that margin of error. But um, this came in multiple finishes, and it wasn't a 
good enough block for me to stop using the heat killer I was using um, so to swap over so I kind of just tested it and I left it as is so right now I have the velocity version in my system and I'm going to replace it with this now um, when I take the velocity out I'll obviously insert that portion into here um, so I'm gonna get cracking uh, replacing and we'll see what the temperature change differences are uh, personally the velocity block has done me pretty well um, I find it to perform uh, better than this block by one to two degrees um, you know a little a little bit better so it falls in line with the heat killer and the velocity block also has a different um, kind of cooling layout than this one does so uh, why I thought it would be similar to this it's definitely this is completely something different okay so we'll be interesting to see what the what the <clears throat> temperature changes are. So I will pick this up video again once this is installed, and we'll take a look at the temperature compared to the velocity. So it's been a few days since I made that unboxing. Um, today is the day that uh, the block officially launches. It will come available on screen. You'll see that it comes in the black, uh, black nickel, pure nickel, black copper, and clear. Now, the black copper is differentiated because it has the red frame. That red frame is only for the black and copper um, combination. And also launching today are the somewhat um, colored frames. Uh, unfortunately, uh, from what I can tell, the colored frames really only work for the clear because it's for inside the block, right? So... If you have a solid black top or a solid nickel top, you don't really see the colored frames anymore. Okay, so if you want the colored frames, you should probably go with the clear. Otherwise, only you will know it's there. And I originally hadn't planned to take the block apart, but I ended up having to do so because I wanted to do the EK logo in an upright position inside the build. Um, you can see here, this is pretty much the breakdown diagram uh, that's provided by EK. You have the block top, and then you have the frame. This is the colored portion option that you can get that I was talking about earlier. Uh, then you have the mounting bracket. This mounting bracket um, is not reversible, so it's only a one-way. Um, not so much because of the mounting hold positions, but because uh, there is a mounting tab that goes to the cold plate uh, that hole is not uniform on both sides. So if you wanted to rotate the block 180, it's not something you can do. Okay, so then you have the O-rings, and then you have the cooling engine, and so forth. Now, also, um, aside from the diagram, you have photos here of my teardown of it. Okay, so you can see from the teardown, um, everything is machined extremely nice, it's, um, but... Looking at this cooling engine, you can see that they kind of designed it with the third upper die in uh, in mind. And now, if you look at it from when it's assembled, you can see that uh, where the two O-rings are. And then you take that into consideration when you consider how the third upper chip itself looks. And you'll notice that it kind of just lines up with the die. Uh, this design is... You know, pretty intuitive. And I think um, that probably is the reason why it performs a little better um, at the end of the day. Uh, we'll get into those numbers shortly. So let's just have a quick look at the performance here. Um, a little background on the system. Uh, this is in an in in Win 909 EK case. Uh, the loop consists of two D5 pumps. They're not running at 100%. They're running at about 30 to 60% speed. Um, they're completely controlled based off of water temperature. I have two 480 degree, um, not 80 degree, sorry. I have two uh, 480 millimeter rads. Uh, both are Hardware Labs GTSs. Uh, my ambient temp tends to be anywhere from 28, uh, pretty much 28 most of the time, uh, 26 to 28. And my idle water temperature is 31C pretty much all the time. Um, this loop is pretty efficient, so I don't have uh, high fluctuation in water temp uh, for load. Um, between this block, the magnitude, and the previous EK velocity nickel I had in there, so we're talking nickel to nickel, 
Um, I notice about a four degree drop, uh, four to five degree drop, uh, mostly five, sometimes six in idle. But for under 100% load, it's definitely um, a good 5C drop. Now, uh, I run my 3960X on PBO, so the max voltage I see being you know, applied at any one time is 1.481 volts. That's a little bit high for sure, but that is, you know, uh, automatic overclocking in the BIOS. Uh, I personally have not found it worth the time and effort to overclock each core and then set everything for 24 cores and even the 32 core. It's just, I mean, if, if you're into that, there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, PPO works fine. And I noticed that I get similar results compared to manual overclocking. Granted, the temperature is a little higher because the board puts more voltage than necessary. Uh, but that's a BIOS issue. Uh, but with that said, uh, it's definitely nice to see a temp drop. Um, the velocity block was very much in line with heat killer, uh, the heat killer block, and very in line with pretty much everything else on the market. So... Since I don't have all the blocks anymore, I used to have all the third river blocks. I can't do a direct one-to-one -one comparison across all of them. But from what I can tell you is that based on my experience owning most of the third river blocks, this definitely so far seems to be the best performing one. Now I say seems to be because um, it definitely is performing better than my velocity. Now the third river die itself has changed a little bit in third generation in design compared to the previous generations, right? So you have the big IO die in the middle now, unlike before where you just had four chiplets, you know, of equal size. So with that change in mind, um, you know, there may be performance variation from blocks. But if you look at most of the third upper blocks, they're pretty much designed the same way, right? They have a giant cold plate and you no know, cooling engine on top of that. Uh, pretty much, if you look at the magnitude, it's got kind of water directed to flow in two separate chambers rather than one gigantic one, right? So how much that actually, you know, how you can say scientifically measure that to temperature reduction, I don't have the tools to do that, right? So with that said, um, I definitely recommend this block if you want a very high premium Threadripper block. I think most of the people who buy Threadripper uh, CPUs and platforms, you know, uh, and also do water cooling. It's definitely within your budget because if you can buy a thousand something dollar CPU, you can buy a 200, 300 ish CPU water block, right? I mean, this is a socket that's not going to change much um, in terms of the mounting, but this is a server socket, and server sockets don't change that often. Right, so even looking at mainstream Intel sockets, you notice that the same coolers can be used across multiple Intel sockets. So I think the cooler is a long time investment. Um, if you're gonna get one, you might as well get the best one you can get and get a very premium one. This is an extremely premium CPU block. Um, I don't really know how to stress that outside of, out of all the CPU blocks I've ever purchased you know, or owned or was sent to me or whatever you wanna call it. This is definitely hands down the nicest one I've ever had. 